If you've heard pros talk poker strategy, uh, you may have come across the phrase one minus alpha. Uh, today I'm going to talk about what that means. Uh, so basically, people use one minus alpha to figure out, it's a pretty a math formula, a pretty simple one, to figure out how often, in theory, you need to defend against a bet or a raise. Um, what happens is, if you don't defend enough against a bet or a raise, you're incentivizing your opponent to bluff with every hand that cannot win otherwise. And you, you become then exploitable uh, to that play. Uh, so the way that the math works, um, alpha stands for the bet size that your opponent makes divided by the pot after the bet size is added to it. So for example, if the pot is $100, your opponent bets $50. Alpha is their $50 bet over their $50 bet plus the $100 pot, which is 50 over 150, which is uh, 0.33, no, one third. Um, so one minus alpha then is one minus one third equals two thirds. That means you have to defend two thirds of the time to make them indifferent to bluffing. I guess that's another poker term that, that you may have come across. What you're trying to do theoretically in poker is to force indifference uh, onto your opponents, um, which I guess sounds kind of funny. Uh, when you say, but in their strategy, you're, you're trying to, uh, to force indifference um, so that they don't have the opportunity to exploit you by, say, under bluffing or over bluffing. Um, to illustrate the, the concept, I'm going to use a, a pretty simple um, toy game, it's called. I'm using a lot of key, uh, like, what are these called? <laughs> using a lot of buzzwords. Um, <laughs> so a, a, a toy game is, you know, a simple, a, a simple game that we set up that, that illustrates a, you know, certain mechanic or strategy uh, much easier than, you know, the full complex game of No Limit Hold'em, Paul Limit Omaha across multiple streets, et cetera. So the toy game uh, is a classic one called the Ace-King-Queen game. Um, you and I are playing against each other. I get dealt a king, and you get dealt an ace or a queen. You get dealt each one half the time. So there's you know a deck with whatever, uh, four aces and four queens. It's shuffled. One of them goes to you, and then I just, I just hold on to the king of hearts. Um, now there's $100 in the pot, and we have $100 in our stacks. The, the question now is, what is your strategy and what is my strategy? So if you were to check, well, this is the simplest, simplest one first. If you were to check to me, my strategy is to never bet because you always know whether you have the best hand or not. And I never know whether I have the best hand or not. So if I bet, I'm never getting called by a queen because you know you lose. And I'm always getting called or raised by an ace. So my strategy is simple. If check to, I just check. Now, your strategy is a little bit trickier. Um, first of all, you know that I'm checking. So there's no check raising because check raising an ace doesn't do anything for you because I'm never going to bet. So you know that if you, if you want to get value from your ace, if you want to make money, you have to bet it. And so, therefore, you have to bet all of your aces because th th there's no benefit to checking an ace. You have an ace half the time, bet it every time. How much do you want to bet with your ace? You want to bet as much as you possibly can, which in this case is your stack, $100. So your strategy, the first component of your strategy is you're going to go all in with every, every time you have an ace. Now, let's say when you have a queen, you decide, you know what, I have the worst hand. I don't want to, I don't want to do anything. Uh, I just want to check. What happens then is you go all in with an ace every time, you check a queen every time, and I can exploit you by folding every single time. You make nothing. You just you just win the $100 pot. Now, I guess a quick aside that in these toy games and in poker in general, when we're speaking about in theory, each side knows the other side's strategy because we're trying to determine the theoretically optimal strategy and the theoretically optimal strategy is very roughly defined as, um, I mean, a strategy which cannot be improved upon in expected value under under the assumption that your opponent is employing 
the best counter strategy that they can. So um, probably the technical definition is a little bit different than that, but you get the idea. Um, so I know your strategy. Um, so that means if you can't go all in with your ace every time and then check your queen every time. Um, you also can't go all in with your ace every time and go all in with your queen every time. Because yes, you leave me guessing, but it's actually not much, much guesswork because I know that half the time that you go all in, you have an ace. Half the time you go all in, you have a queen. I have to call $100. So I lose $100 if you have the ace. But if you have a queen, I win my I win your $100 bet and I win the $100 pot. So I win $200. So then my counter strategy is to call every time. Pretty simple. The formula for figuring out how often you need to bluff, it it's it's actually for some reason there's it's it's not there's not like a a buzzword for it that I'm aware of, but it's but it's also pretty simple. I have 2 to 1 odds when you bet $100 into $100. So in order to make me indifferent, you need to have two value bets for every one bluff. So if you have if, if, you, if you have a, an ace twice and you have a queen once when you go all in, now when I call, I'm going to lose $100 two times out of three. I'm going to win $200 one time out of three. So I'm going to break even. So that's the indifference you're trying to force. So your strategy is Go all in with your ace every time. Go all in with your queen half the time. Um, that's that's your optimal strategy. What's my optimal strategy? My optimal strategy is where we employ one minus alpha. So you're risking $100 um, to try to win this $100 pot. So alpha is your $100 over the $100 pot plus your $100 bet. So 100 over 200 is one half. So one minus one half is also one half. I have to call half of my range. So I have to call half the time with my king. So whatever, I can flip a coin, assuming it's a fair coin. And now we've got, you know, we've completely solved this toy game. We have purely optimal strategy for this game for both opponents. Now in poker, the game is much more complex. There are so many more hands that, that each of us can have. There's also the component uh, or element that when you're betting the river, sometimes you're going to bet hands you know, bet your ace, bet a value betting hand that actually loses because sometimes I'm, I am I can also get dealt an ace uh, in, in the real game. So things change a lot and we're not going to go into, you know, each and every way that that changes things, but understanding the kind of the, understanding the core of game theory helps you navigate these spots. And in almost all cases, definitely not all, but in almost all cases, one minus alpha is still going to apply. Or, or something very close to it. So anytime that you're playing and you feel like you're getting run over, you feel like you're guessing, you, you can't read your opponent, I would urge you to try to think about how often you have you know, different types of hands and then try to call with, you know, if they're betting $100 into $100, try to call with half of those hands. Or if it makes you more comfortable um, because you can't figure those out. I mean, we're all at different stages in our poker game. If you just have no idea how often I have top, how often you have top pair, how often you have second pair, how often you have ace high, whatever the case may be, you do know when you have a hand that only beats bluffs. So now there's not going to be, you don't want to say like, okay, you bet hundred into hundred. If I have a bluff catcher, I flip a coin in my head and I, and I call half the time, fold half the time, because sometimes you do have hands that beat bluffs. So then you'll be over calling if you call half your hands that only beat bluffs and all of your hands that do beat bluffs. Um, but depending on the spot, you know, maybe flip a coin in your head um, and, you know, call a third of your hands that beat bluffs against a pot bet or something like that to, to get you somewhere close so that you know, look, look, maybe I don't know what my opponent's doing. I don't know their strategy. I don't know if they're bluffing all the time, if they're not bluffing enough. But I want to be comfortable knowing that they're not taking advantage of me. So I'm going to employ a strategy that can't really be taken advantage of in any, in any material way. And I, I'm calling enough and folding enough as well. Um, now, of course, you know, making hand reading and understanding things like that, it, it, this, is, this is like a fallback plan. This is this is kind of a worst case scenario where you want to protect yourself from being exploited, but you don't really, because you don't know where you're at. What people will actually do, I told you to flip a coin in your head, people, uh, mostly professionals, 
um, actually do truly randomize. So when they're playing online, for example, they might have a random number generator up and say, okay, well, I know that I want to bet this hand two thirds of the time. They click the random number generator and if it's in the, in the top third, then they check. And if it's in the bottom two thirds and they bet or whatever the case may be. And people do this live. They, um, they will either, so like a very simple way, which I think can open you up to some exploits, but it's not really, uh, really likely nobody's going to figure it out is you can say like, okay, well, uh, if I want to bluff half the time, then I'm going to bluff when my higher card is on the left of, of my two whole cards. And then I'm going to check when it's on the right. Um, and other people live will, will look at their watch and, you know, you have 60 seconds on your watch. And so you can figure out, you know, well, it, it's actually easier to divide it into four quadrants than, can, than do the actual seconds and, and figure out, you know, where the second hand is that's going to randomize for you. So people will really do that. You can do that. I don't do it because the way that I play I'm I'm rarely falling back on this, and I, I'm not as con I'm not very concerned with theoretically optimal play compared to a lot of my uh, peers. Um, so I just try to make a read. But there will be times where I'm unsure. I don't want to get run over, or I don't want to be overcalling, and um, and I just say, you know what, I need to I need to call this sometimes bold sometimes. I'm going to randomize in some, I, I actually don't really randomize. I've never randomized with a random number generator or in any other way, but I do base uh, some calls on like, okay, I know that I'm in the top half of my range here. So I don't have any feeling of whether or not he's bluffing too much. So I'm just going to call because I'm in the top half of my range. Um, yeah, hopefully that's helpful. And, and even if uh, not super helpful for your, um, for your game, hopefully you can feel smarter talking about it to somebody else.